Hi, this is Peter Rossi again to talk to you a little bit about how to do uh, multiple regressions out of the same data set. In other words, to take a factor variable in a data set that identifies a cross-sectional unit or a market or what have you and run a separate regression for every single value that takes place. You can do that in R with one command. Again, that illustrates the tremendous power that R has. So this data, this uh, file is available on, um, on the course website. And I'm going to go back to the, the, to the detergent data set. If you recall, that uh, data set has the quantity sold and the price uh, for Thai detergent, uh, various sizes, for about 86 different stores. The stores are identified by a store number, which is a factor or qualitative variable that takes on uh, these unique values. So that's actually a number associated with each store. It of course could be a, a, a text string like its actual physical address or you know what have you. Um, so I'm going to bring in the uh, data uh, detergent data again. And now what I want to do is literally run a, a, a regression for every, uh, every um, value of store. So I'd like to take only the data for the first element of store the second element and so on. So if I look at what's in store, say levels of detergent dollar sign store, you can see there are these levels, there are 86 levels, there's two, five, eight, nine, these are different actual numbers of these Dominic stores, okay? So for each value, so I like to take only those observations where store equals two, the first unique value, and run a regression on that. Then only those observations for which store equals five, run the regression on that. That can be done with what's called the by function. So by says, I'm going to do, by says, do something on a data frame for every value of the factor. So which data frame? The first argument is the data frame. That's the detergent data frame you can see right here, right? Then by the factor store. So for each unique value in store, I will separate out and do a separate evaluation of the function on detergent. And the function is here specified by me as a user function. And it's the function of x. x is going to be a data frame. And the function is, please perform the regression of the log of q tied 128 on log of price tied 128 for data equals x. So what by will do is create a data sub-data frame of detergent for every unique value of store. Pass that function on that. That's what x is. It's the dummy argument for that data set. And then create, create the results and put them in out. Out is going to be a list. It's going to out is going to have one element for every unique value of store. Okay. Now this outer argument here is with, and you can see with to this ending uh, parentheses here. It says with detergent. So that's like a sort of like the same effect of attaching something, it, but it says let's create an environment. Let's put detergent in that environment. Let's let any function utilize all the variables in detergent, but nothing else. It's kind of isolating on its own so you can do no harm. Remember, one of the problems with attaching is if there's another a variable in the workspace that is the, the same name as the variables in the attachment, it's going to get masked in some sense. Okay, so let's run that command. It's going to run 86 different regressions with one command. Okay, it's done already. So what's in out? Out is a list, okay? Um, is list out. True, right? So let's look at the first element of out, which is remember how you index lists by the double brackets. And that is going to be the regression for the first store, that's store number two. Okay, so that's for store number two. And how, how, many, how long, how many elements are there in out? 86, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to remember um, what's in out actually is the results of the regression. It includes all those things like residuals and fitted values and all this good stuff. So let's summarize. Let's apply the summary function. Remember, summary of out one will be the results for the first regression. You can see here is the coefficient, the price elasticity of minus 4.48, the standard error, the T values, P values, and all that good stuff. So let's apply summary, not just to the first element of out, which I've done here, this command, but let's apply a, a summary, the summary function to every element of a list. That's called the list apply. So list apply is a function in R that says, here's a list, please apply the second argument function to each element of the list and generate a list in return. 
So out sum is going to also be a list with the summaries, right? So out sum of one, we'll see that uh, that same regression output. Okay. Now I want to fetch the coefficients. That's everything after here. It says coefficients colon all this stuff here: the estimates, the standard errors, the t values, and so on. So what I'm going to create a so what I want to preserve is the coefficient estimates, the standard errors, the t values, and p values for each of these 86 different um, uh, regression runs, and I'm going to use s apply, which means a simplified apply. So I'm going to apply s apply to out sum, and the function coef co c o e f is a function that returns all those coefficient numbers. Let's do that. So what is coefficient? Coefficient is a is a matrix of eight columns, eight rows, and eighty six columns. So if I look at coefficient mat of 1, that is the numbers. So here the first two numbers are the estimates, 13 and minus 4.4. The second is the standard error of the intercept, standard error of the slope, t value of the intercept, t value of the slope, p value for the t value of the intercept, p value for the t value of the slope. So those are all the numbers I need into it. So now in order to, so I've got 86 different coefficient estimates and 86 different standard errors, or equivalently 86 coefficient estimates and 86 different confidence intervals. So it's a bit of a challenge to display that information. So I'm going to create all the confidence intervals and put them in a matrix, and I'm going to paint all those confidence intervals on a graph. So here I'm going to create this matrix called CI for confidence interval, and I'm going to pick off the relevant elements of the coefficient matrix, the standard errors for the, the price elasticity. So the CI of 1 is going to be all the, all the price the elasticity estimates. CI of second um, column will be the left interval of the confidence interval, and CI third column will be the right interval. Okay, so if you look at head of CI, you'll see here's the first, first regression, there's this price elasticity here, then here's the confidence interval stretching from minus 5.3 to minus 6. Point, uh, excuse me, 3.65, and so on for each of the regressions. Okay, now let's paint the interval. So what I'm going to do here is literally create a plot area over here. I'm going to have um, each, each confidence interval is going to be a different rung on this graph. I'm just going to stack them all up. Um, and each confidence interval I'm going to paint uh, in red and put a black diamond where the pr price elasticity estimate is. And then I'm going to print a text string here that denotes the, the name of the store, the, rather the number of the store. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to plot. So this, this plot command here just simply just creates the frame. So let me run that so you can see that. See it created a frame and here's the from the minimum to the maximum of the confidence intervals. That's what I painted here. And I actually made a little room here. So I said minus 0.5 to make a little extra room to accommodate the text string I'm going to paint over here on this, on this border. Okay. And now I'm going to loop through all of the regressions and paint each confidence interval. So I've done that here. Okay. So you can see here at the bottom it says 2. I don't know if you could see that. Here's the point estimate of a minus 4.4. Here's the confidence interval. It's the second and so on. You can see where most of them are. Remember, these are for all observations, not just for the non-promoted weeks. Okay. And then let's put a title on it. Okay. And we're done. So we've displayed all the different price elasticities. You can see that most of them are about the same, around minus four. There's a few of them that are quite a bit larger, but you notice the confidence interval is, is correspondingly larger. Okay. So anyway, this gives you a feeling for how to do many different regressions in one command in R. And then the challenge really becomes how to summarize or visualize the information in those regressions. And I think one useful thing to do is to plot all the confidence intervals so you can see the extent to which the stores differ in their price elasticities. Okay, um, bye for now and have fun with R.